In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to remove people from complicated backgrounds inside of Photoshop. I'm going to show you of how to remove a person from a photograph that has a more complicated background. I just did a tutorial that showed three examples and some of the comments I got from people were, you know, hey, how about something for a more complicated background? So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, so there's a couple of different scenarios you may be facing. The first one is you're the photographer, so you have control over what images you have to work on. The second scenario, and this is very, very common, is you are the designer or the retoucher and you just get handed a bunch of photos and that's it. That's what you have to work with. So I'm going to address both of those situations right now. So when I'm the photographer, I always like to shoot an empty or a clean plate. So essentially what that would be is you take the shot with the models, then you get everybody out of the scene without moving the camera, and then you take another photograph of just the set, which is empty, and it makes it easy to clone things out. The other one is maybe you've got some different photos from that shoot. So let's quickly look at that scenario now, and then we're going to address the second scenario, which is you have that one photo to work with. Okay, so here's a photo. We've got a woman crossing the street right now, and we have another shot of the same scene. It's not exactly the same shot. You can see the camera's even moved, but you know what? It's going to be good enough for us to clean this up. Let's look at this one. So what we want to do is grab our quick selection tool, and we want to make a loose selection around her. Now, the quickest way to do that is with the quick selection selected, go up and choose select subject. Now, Photoshop will make a somewhat decent selection, but we want to really loosen this up. So we're going to choose select and we are going to modify and expand that selection by a good 25 pixels. Actually, let's make it 50 pixels and click OK. So now we've got a nice loose selection and this is good because it gives us plenty of room to do content aware. So now we're just going to hit the shift delete and it brings up the fill dialog box and that would be shift backspace on Windows and then we just want to choose content aware. Leave everything else at the default settings and click OK. And we should see her disappear pretty quickly. There we go. And Command D or Control D turns off the selection. Okay, so we can see, you know, we've got some problems back here. But the nice thing is we can grab the second shot from the same location. And let's just drag that in, drag it into the tab, wait for that one, go down. We don't release yet. Now we release and we've dropped both of these photos into the same on different layers. So what we want to do is we want to align these. And I think the way to align it is with these signs. So we see that with those signs there. Let's hit the five key, it drops it down to 50% opacity and it enables me to line up those signs. See that? And now we're starting to align the background a little bit. See how the trees and everything is starting to line up? Let's go over there a little bit. Now, if you locked this down on a tripod, you wouldn't even have to do this shot matching, but you know what? This is gonna be pretty good. Let's push it up to 100% opacity and now what we want to do, we've got this sitting over the top. We just want to hide this photograph right now. So I'm going to go down before I hit the layer mask, hold down the Alt or the Option key. Now tap the layer mask, fills it with black, which hides the contents of this layer. It's still there, but you can't see it. Now what we're going to do is just paint in the areas that we want. And the way to do that is to grab a B for the brush tool right there. And now with the brush tool, I want to make sure I'm painting with white. Hit the D key to reset foreground background colors. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint in here. And we can see we can just paint in that area there. And it makes it nice. Let's bring that up to 100% opacity so we can see this properly. And we just want to just nicely blend that in. And if we look at that, let's just hit the X key. Paint with black if we go over and we can just merge those areas in and we've more or less got it. So we've got the shadow here, but we can't really paint that on because notice how the light is different there. So we're not going to do that. All we would do is we'll use the clone stamp to get rid of the shadow. And in fact, we're going to do that right now as part of the second scenario. So you can see when you have 
uh, multiple shots, it's really quick and easy. So let's have a look at the second scenario where we can just brute force this. Now, one of the things you've got to bear in mind when you're going to remove a person from the background, you have to have something there that you can use to cover it up. So example here, we're going to be cloning. We're going to take parts of the trees. We're going to take parts of the road. We're going to do different things like that. The first thing you're going to do is just duplicate the layer. So that's just command J to make a copy. I always like to have a clean background in the back. So let's grab our quick select tool again. And once again, we're going to choose select subject. Let's expand it once again. So we're going to choose to select to modify. And we want to expand this to 50. Now, the reason we're doing this is it just gives us a nice big loose selection and it makes it a lot easier for us to do the rest of that work. So we're just going to do content aware, shift delete and click OK. Now, this is our starting place. Let's see what Photoshop gives us. You know what? That gives us a pretty good starting place. So I'm just going to click to deselect. And I'm looking up here in the trees and that. That's pretty good. Now, remember the goal here in commercial work is to sell your image to the audience. It doesn't have to be perfect because they're never going to see the before and the after image. They're only going to see the after image. So the goal here is to make sure the after image is convincing. All right, it's looking pretty good so far. Obviously, we've got some work to do. So why don't we make a selection over this area here? I'm just going to grab this area because this is a little bit weird up here in the sky. We need to kind of get this replaced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Content Aware one more time. So let's hit Shift Delete and then click and see if it does a better job, which it does. If I click away, we can see, you know what? We can pretty much almost sell that. There's a little bit of work we need to do. And so now we're going to jump into our clone stamp tool, create a new layer, choose the clone stamp, go up here and make sure that current and below is turned on. Let's make the clone stamp nice and big. And now what we're looking for is once again, not perfection, but we're looking to convince the audience. So let's go here and I'm going to grab some more of this tree. So I'm going to hit the Alt or the Option key to make a selection and I'm just going to kind of paint some of that tree down there. Let's grab some of this uh, stuff from over here and we're just going to kind of extend that. No one really knows what it is because it's out of focus and all we're looking to do is just create a little bit of detail over there. Maybe grab a bit of that grass there and see what we're doing. Now let's go up here. We want to clone some of this in. Take it from the other side. And we don't need the shadow all the way here. So let's start over there and we're just going to kind of clone this out. Get rid of any of those hard lines. And every now and then you'll accidentally pick up a little bit and don't worry about that. And all I'm doing here is getting rid of the repetitive pattern. Same thing up here. Let's grab that and we can just kind of go there a little bit. And we could even just add some of this road in just to this kind of area here. And I'm just going to change this to a harder edge brush right here. Take it down to about there and it's going to just enable me to just kind of paint. Let's create a sample, make it smaller. I'm just going to blur that. So let's just select that little area around there. And let's blend it in. Okay, let's grab our clone stamp down here, make it a little bit smaller. Alt or Option, and we can just kind of extend that a little bit if we wanted. And what we could do too is we could just fade this in. If we put a layer mask on here, grab a black brush, let's drop the opacity down a little bit. And then what we can do with this soft brush is we can just start to just fade these areas in. See what I'm doing there? I'm just kind of fading that in. 
and same thing under there and we're just kind of fading in what was there and just trying to create just a little bit of visual something that goes over there maybe on that edge there but let's go in here and we want to get rid of the shadows here so once again we're just going to work with our clone stamp tool and we're going to work with our new layer let's just zoom in so right now i'm just hitting the option and the scroll wheel on my mouse to get in nice and close we can see we're cloning onto the new layer not the mask hit the alt or option key make that selection and you'll see the overlay and i want to line that overlay up see that looks good also want to soften that brush let's just go up here and we're just going to turn the hardness all the way down and now i'm just going to just do that and what's happening is it's just sampling from the same angle and the same distance all the time so i don't have to keep resampling for this let's just go in there and you can see that cross here where we're sampling and how's it look on that edge it actually looks pretty good so let's just keep going okay so let me create a sample here and i'm just going to go through and just clean this up And we'll come back to the hard parts so we're going to create a new sample here option click go down there and then we can just go through here and we can clean this up let's get rid of that shadow okay so we've got this shadow here so if we option click there we can sample that And now what we want to do, notice that this part is all blurry. So what we need to do is we need to sample from the cement here. And we're just going to go over there. See what I'm doing? And notice there's a little bit of a blur here. A lot of people wouldn't notice that. But what you could do is just go up once again. Just continue to do this. Just keep sampling and keep drawing. And eventually you can get this perfect. I'm not going to go through every little bit because... The purpose of this here, I just want to say something actually really quickly. Sometimes when I do these kind of tutorials, I get comments from people and the comments are like, hey, this is not perfect. You missed a bit or, you know, they throw the two cents worth then, but it's not a constructive two cents worth. It's more of a, they're taking this as a challenge. Well, that's not the right way to approach these kind of videos. I'm not doing these videos to impress anybody or show you what I can do. Um, I'm sure there's other videos out there for that. My purpose here is to teach and bring education and show how to use the tools inside of Photoshop to get a result. So if you're here for me to impress you, you probably want to move on to another video. If you're here to learn, then keep watching. Because one of the things is, you know, in the real world, and I, I do this in the real world professionally, generally sitting generally speaking i'll sit there as long as it takes i'll put some music on and i'll work away and i'll do it in passes so i'll do the first pass i'll get it pretty good then i'll i might go away come back and then look at the imperfections come back fix those and then come back and then look at it and fix those so it's basically like clearing a field you get rid of the big boulders then you get rid of the rocks, then you get rid of the stones, then you get rid of the pebbles, and then eventually you sweep up the sand and you've got a nice clean yard. And that's how it works. But that takes a long time. And so what I'm doing is I'm showing you the exact techniques that you need to go through and get it to perfection, but I don't want to spend hours uh, doing that. So I hope you kind of understand where I'm coming from. And with that understanding, let's continue. All right, so I see I need this. So what I need to do in order to fix this, I need a good area. So if I see the top, I notice I've got a good clean top here. I can use that. For this side, I can do that and they can meet in the middle. But in order to do this, let's create a new layer. And in that way, what I do often is I'll go over the lines and then use masks to trim it back. Okay, see this line here? I don't want to include that, so I'm going to start just past that line. I'm going to hold the Ultra Option key and I'm going to put that right over the edge. Now, if I move, you'll see that edge. Notice that. So I'm going to take it right up to here and now I'm going to start to paint. And see what I'm doing here is I'm taking this past that edge. That's great. Now I want to do the same thing up here. 
So I'm going to start on this edge here. And now I'm just going to paint up and see what I'm doing. I'm just adding that in there. And I don't want that crack, so let me grab that there because that's obvious as a repeating pattern. You want to avoid those. So now we go up, we apply a layer mask, and now I just grab a brush. Now for hard or semi-hard, I don't want it all the way to hardness. Let's take it to about there. Black brush, I'm just going to go there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint on the mask with black. Make sure my opacity is all the way up to 100. And then I'm just going to paint on that edge. See what I'm doing is I'm just taking away the mask. And that gives a nice edge there. So if you look at that photograph, no one would know. Same thing here. Should we repeat that? Let's do it. We'll do it on the same layer. Grab that layer. Let's zoom in to close to 100%. Generally speaking, I'll do 100%. Okay, let's grab our clone stamp. And I want to create that edge. So let's click it there to create that sample with the Alt or the Option key. And I'm just going to paint up and see what I'm doing there. Grab a little bit of that concrete texture there. See what I'm doing? I'm just kind of spreading that texture up. If you don't have any good texture there, you can grab it from somewhere else, such as there, and see what I'm doing. I'm just bringing back that texture now from a different part of the photo. And then you could take it there and you could spread it. See what I'm doing? Okay. So I'll let you do that on your own. I'm just going to click here now and I'm going to do the top. So now I've got a nice corner. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab my brush and I'm just going to paint it away. Make the brush a little bit smaller and just kind of paint that edge. And I can't paint it here because it's going to show that underneath. So what I need to do is just grab another sample. Okay, so I need that edge. So why don't I Alt or click here to create the sample from there. I'm going to bring it over here, but notice how that angle's different. Okay, so we've got that, but we need a different angle. So let's go in here and under the clone stamp, we've got this neat tool. It's called the clone source. And under the clone source, I can rotate. So I can move this. See what's happening? As I'm rotating it, we can change the angle. So that means now sampling here and painting here, see how it changes that angle? And if it's not what you want, just keep going. Now we can see that angle is a lot better. Okay, let's just go a little bit more. All right, let's sample here and now begin to paint and see how we can just paint that in and it changes the angle and see how we can change the angle so we can sample other parts of the photo and apply them at different angles. All right, so if we look at this, you can see, you know, there's before, there's after. Hey, thanks for watching this tutorial. Did you enjoy it or learn anything new? If you did, let me know in the comments underneath. And if you like these kind of Photoshop tutorials, consider hitting the subscribe button right now and then you become part of the cafe crew and get a new tutorial from me every single week. Don't forget to ring that notification bell so you know when I upload, usually every Tuesday. And if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.